Hi, I'm Mark Molman at Kansas City, Kansas Community College uh, Machine Technology Program. Today we're going to discuss the work holding devices that are utilized on the metal lathe. There's actually several. Predominantly we're going to talk about the three jaw, four jaw chuck and the different type of mounts. Today what we'll do is we'll first start talking about the three jaw chuck. There's a big difference between a three jaw chuck and a four jaw chuck. Three jaw chuck is going to have three holding devices. Four jaw chuck here is going to have four work holding devices. The biggest difference between the three jaw and four jaw chuck is the three jaw chuck, all three jaws will close down or open simultaneously to where four jaw chuck, each jaw will close or open independently. So I'm going to demonstrate that and you will see the differences. Three jaw chuck, as I rotate, there's actually a square drive mechanism here in the side of the chuck. As I put the appropriate wrench, because not all the wrenches are all the same, they're not all going to fit exactly the same in every single chuck. This one here fits in here, needs to fit snugly, but as I rotate, if you notice, our jaws are closing simultaneously. We can close it or we can open it. All three at the same time, at the same rate. Four jaw chuck, each one will open and close independently. Only one jaw is going to move independently. The accuracy levels of a three jaw versus a four jaw chuck are not the same. Three jaw chuck has a tolerance range or an accuracy level of about 10 thousandths. Four jaw chuck has an accuracy level of zero, if we want it to be, predominantly around one thousandths. Now keep in mind, a piece of paper is approximately four thousandths thick. Also on these chucks, many times they're designed to grab the outside of a piece of metal. If I wanted to grab a hold of a piece of metal here, I'll tighten down, or I can also grab a piece of metal on the serrated jaws to the outside like a piece of pipe. So we can put a piece of pipe on there, open the jaws, it will hold our part. Same thing on the four jaw chuck. The biggest difference is some of these jaws we can interchange and some of them we can't. For example, here's a set of jaws designed for a chuck that if we want to grip to the outside, if you notice when I put it in there, the tallest part of the chuck is here versus here, and many times we may have to change those out. They are numbered. This one here has got a number one on it, located right there. There's a number two and a number three. The biggest difference that I want to call out is if we notice where these teeth are starting, they are not all starting at the same, same area. We actually have a, an area that's a little bit narrower here. This is a little bit wider. This one's wider yet. So that tells us if we use these jaws in a three jaw chuck, we also have to put them in the chuck in a proper manner or a correct order. On the chucks themselves that coincide with the numbers we talked about, there's also a number stamped on the face of the chuck. What we have to do is we'll find number one, we're going to start it first, work around to number two, start it secondly, number three thirdly. The reason for that is if we don't get them in a sequential pattern or a manner, what happens is when we close them and the chuck becomes totally closed, what will happen is two chuck jaws will hit and the third one has a big gap in it. It won't allow the chuck to close down evenly, properly. You'll see as I close this particular chuck down, all three jaws at least touch in a corner at the same sequence. If we get them out of order, this one here may be further out. There's a big gap before they, they start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chuck apart. Now these chucks also have a range. Uh, this, I believe, is a 10-inch chuck. You can buy chucks anywhere from very, very small. This is a 6-inch chuck. It's a 10-inch chuck. Um, some of the chucks in our shop, we have one of them that's 20 inches. Obviously, the bigger the chuck, the heavier the chucks are. This particular chuck here weighs approximately 70 pounds. This chuck I can pick up with one hand. It's maybe 20 pounds. So you need to be very cautious picking them up. Make sure your hands are not oily, greasy. Um, so you don't drop it and damage your, yourself or damage the, the chuck itself or the floor or, or building and, the, and the, the property here. So as I'm opening this, you will see the chuck jaws are getting really, really big. It's only going to open to a certain range, though. If you, if you open it up too much to where there's not much um, grabbing, gripping area here, it can damage the chuck and your part can come out. So we want to use the appropriate chuck for the size of material that we're also utilizing. But these chuck jaws, they come out. When we put them back in, there's a little groove that looks like a big spiral. 
that grips these teeth right here. What that's doing for us is it's almost like a timing mark. I'm rotating it around. I'm looking at jaw number one or, or slot number one. And what I'm looking for, my scroll as they call it, is the starting point. If you can see the little jaw or the scroll where it's starting. So this is jaw number one. So I want to locate jaw number one. This is two. This is one. It's stamped here. So what I'm looking to do is I'm going to start my jaw. I'm going to bring the little scroll, the, the first part of the scroll. I'm going to bring it to where it is not within the slot, but it's past the slot. And I'm going to start that jaw first. And I pushed on it a little bit. It's easier to do this on the machine versus for our demonstration. But what I'm trying to do is I want it to grab. If you notice, our chuck jaw is moving very slowly right now. But what I want it to do is I want it to grab that scroll, making sure it's, it's engaged. As I rotate, we'll know if it's engaged because it's moving. And I'm looking in slot number two for that little hook again. There it is again. I am looking, like I said, right in this area right here. I'm looking for that little start locating chuck number two or jaw number two. It's marked here as well as on the what they call the master jaw. I'm going to start it in, rotate. You can see it start to move and I'm looking for the scroll to come around again on jaw number three. There it is. I'm going to start jaw number three. It's almost like a timing mark for us. So these chuck jaws as it closes down are all closing down at an even rate. If we get one of them off, when it's totally closed, two of the jaws will hit and you'll have a big gap on the last one. So it's very important that we get those timing mark or indexing marks as well as a jaw that, co that coincides with the slot number equally started correctly. So as I rotate this down, what we'll see is we are going to see all these chuck jaws closing down. They are also going to close down all evenly. I said we're closing it down and you're going to see that all three of them touch at the same rate at the same time. That's what we're looking for. Another three jaw chuck. Some three jaw chucks have the jaws, as I said before, that are inverted. Let's say we don't want them all to be closed down in this area. We want our chuck jaws to be setting like this, which is opposite. Many times you have to, chucks will come with two sets of jaws. They're designed to either close this way or close by actually changing the jaws. One more method that will allow us to flip our jaws around, and I previously loosened up a set of these bolts, some type of chucks, instead of changing the actual jaws out, many times what we'll do is there are chucks that we can reverse our jaws. This is a two-piece jaw. This is a one-piece jaw. If you notice, the back half doesn't have the serrations that we've gone into our scroll with. What it allows us to do is it will allow us to turn our chuck jaws the opposite direction. It saves us a little bit of time versus changing the whole chuck jaws out. We would have to change all three, obviously, in order for that to be a proper assembly. These tighten down with an Allen wrench to hold them in place. I normally will always wipe off the back of my jaws where, before I attach it with a rag. Make sure it's all clean, because if we have debris in between there, obviously these chuck jaws will no longer have any type of accuracy. Now keep in mind, we'd have to change all three chuck jaws to do that. That will allow us to have our gripping area out here to where previously our gripping area was to the inside. So it allows us to grab outside of, of an object versus the inside. Even though I said previously, we can actually grip in these surfaces also. But if you look at the height of this right here versus the height we may have out here, you have much more grabbing area here, gripping force, than we might have on a small area. There's some precautions if you grab small areas like that, your part could come out of the chuck depending on how big a cut you're taking and what the conditions might be. So I'm going to turn this chuck jaw back around and we're going to start discussing a little bit more about the four jaw chuck. So I'm Notice, like I said, you'd wipe it off, blow off with the master jaw. This is the what they call actually a soft jaw. We're going to reattach it. And our chuck is back in order to ready to be used. Three jaw chuck works simultaneously. Is only accurate within about ten thousandths. 
So that's the drawback to the three jaw chuck. They also make some of them that are, like I said before, many sizes. One thing I want to call your attention to is this can, is not going to tighten down or grab a piece of metal that's approximately the size of this because it won't, it won't with the chuck jaws all the way tightened or closed, it may not grab all materials. It's, it's going to have to grab a certain range to where this smaller chuck, you can see on it, it's very, very small. We could grab a very small object with it as well as grab it gripping to the outside. But I will tell you the small chuck, we end up having to change the jaws out to invert them. All work simultaneously. Um, diameter chucks may be different. Some of them have jaws that we can reverse the jaws. Some of them we have to change the jaws out in order to reverse them. Four jaw chucks, each jaw moves independently. If I rotate this one out, you can see only one jaw moving. One thing unique about a four jaw chuck is the jaws can be inverted without either changing them on the master jaws or actually changing the chuck jaws themselves. They're designed to where we can put the jaws in either way and they will work. Now, you would think that three jaw chuck would do that too. I really don't know the correct answer of why they do that on a four jaw chuck and they don't do it on a three jaw chuck, but we can put our chuck jaws in either way. If you notice, each jaw moves independently, it does not move simultaneously. Now the, the reason for that is, is because we can adjust these independently, which truly will give us a higher accuracy level than the three jaw predominantly will do. Next I wanna discuss the mounting methods of our chucks. Now I'm gonna start with an L2. The L stands for what they call a long nose tapered spindle, if you notice, it has a thread here, and it has an angle in here, and there's a big slot in here. But this is what they call a long nose spindle, long nose tapered spindle, but this is one method. Threaded tapered spindle is another type of uh, attaching device. What we have is we have a um, thread inside here, and it's gonna screw on. The third style is what they call a D-mount. This one here is a D16, and it uses rods that slide in the machine to attach this chuck. Now, prior to attaching any of these machines, we want to make sure that we wipe off the back of these. The threaded style and long nose style, we just want to make sure they're clean, as well as a lot of times chip accumulate in this area here. We want to make sure there's no chips in those areas when we're attaching it. A lot of um, students in the past, what they have is they'll get this, this cam lock style, and they think that these little rods are loose, and they think that's, that's actually a, uh, a defect. It is not. They are designed to be loose, but they are not designed to rotate. If you notice, you will see a little set screw in here. We can take that screw out, and these are threaded in, and it will allow us to adjust them either in or out. That is going to um, coincide with when we attach to the machine where act, how tight we have to have it on the machine. So the three different styles. These are the only three styles that I know that are out there. Again, the long nose spindle taper, the threaded style, or the cam lock or D, D style. This particular one here is a, what they call D16. It has six of these mounting areas on it. A D13 would only have three, so forth and so on.